and you can see, yep, thumbs up if you can read this. Okay, so that means we're good to go. Wonderful. Okay, Elena, I'm ready when you are. Go for it. Hi. Oh, <laughs> hi. I'm Sherry Lee, artist, educator, abuse survivor. I'm the founder of Rant and Rave, a public awareness and empowerment project asking us to recognize child abuse, neglect, and trauma. As a child, I understood the pain, isolation, and voicelessness of living with abuse. Your world is reduced down to only those who know, and those who know can't be trusted. And the people who don't know can't be trusted because they can't understand. So growing up, art was my refuge, as it is for millions of survivors right now. I went there to disappear. I went there to make my surroundings better. And I went there to rant and rave about unfairness and injustice and just the plain meanness of the world. It was the one place I could. And instead of getting in trouble, I got complimented. So plowing through my own path of healing and discovery, I became attuned to both the silence and the distorted opinions blocking progress and saw how this affects first the survivors as the inability to express themselves and thereby meaningfully connect leads to isolation, disengagement, and depression, frequently developing later into high instances of self-harm and suicide. It also affected the organizations charged with advocating for survivors as they encountered blockades due to taboos and misconceptions about victims, perpetrators, and the level of crisis faced, leading to underreporting resistance to assistance, and importantly, difficulties in prosecuting. It also affects society as it continues to underestimate the frequency, severity, and often the, the sources of offending behaviors. And here the unawareness and social taboos prevent open conversations, serious inquiry, and critical discovery, especially when trusted environments such as schools and churches are involved. Of the 31 million citizens becoming adults in America every year, 24% are abuse survivors. Factoring in their high rates of suicide, such as my husband's, incarceration, and severely curtailed adult life expectancies, the National Library of Medicine indicates that the cost over the course of their lifetime is estimated at $585 billion annually wounding society long after the perpetrator has passed. And I'm sorry, I passed that slide. Having developed trauma-informed creativity classes alongside my artistic practice and own healing journey, I targeted children's advocacy centers or CACs, attempting to access their clients and to obtain funding under their educational and outreach budget. I spoke with 75 people in 18 CACs along with their partners and affiliates. I believed that the CACs were looking for ways to raise awareness about their work and its increasing necessity, and that they were interested in trauma-informed classes. And I thought programs such as the Rant and Rave could be funded under their existing budgets. The need and desire for awareness programs was emphatically confirmed. And I also quickly learned that post-response art therapy services were already being provided which meant that I could access survivors directly through my customers instead of through my own limited reach. And that there is no existing budget blind for such programs that build awareness. Instead, grant writers secure funding in pursuit of identified project, projects of interest. With Rant and Rave, we curate art installations in cities across the Northeast with local victims and their CACs with a customizable and replicable model of development and curation. The Rant Gallery's immersive multimedia works from local survivors, myself, and other relevant artists are designed to help visitors recognize and empathize, inviting them to become more aware and involved. Participating survivors are provided a voice and impact in the community, and even unreported, untreated victims might find help or hope. Revenue generating programmed events such as guest artists and survivor talks aim to engage and connect with as many citizens and survivors as possible. 
and the AMA Journal of Ethics and National Institute of Health have touted the need for such exhibits as being a public health priority. And the Barbara Sinatra Children's Center recent exhibit titled Overcame the Art of the Abused Child generated worldwide recognition. I identified Apple Farm Arts Center in Elmer, Salem County, New Jersey, as a venue suitable to do an MVP to determine if this kind of co-created installation will deliver the results and responses uh, re desired. Selected for its specific demographics, it'll provide both lifetime testing and post-mortem analysis. My existing and growing relationships have produced a network of support, already resulting in three grants, and three additional entities prepared to allocate their own grant writing resources for the project. I'm currently reaching out to Salem County based providers expecting similar results. There are three different models for delivering value to my customer, each with revenue streams independent to the model and all models offer the potential for commissions from sales and special event fees. The MVP represents a full service model with Rant and Rave creating the exhibit within the community coordinated with local CACs. The second is the servicing and licensing model where organizations take the lead in creating using the template and brand with consultation and support from Rant and Rave. And the third is the opportunity for completed exhibitions to travel in whole or in part to alternate installation or display locations throughout the Northeast throughout the year. A four year projection sees the first year with the MVP installation a second year with full CAC partnership while the first year travels. The third year is a new location plus advisory assistance to previous locations while the first and second year travel. And the fourth year of reach goal is the National Children's Alliance officially adopting the program. The timeline consists of continuing to test, raise funds and coordinate with Salem County CACs from now through install April 20. 25 with a post-mortem analysis in May, identifying the 2026 location and exploring leasing and rental possibilities for the closing exhibit. The budget shown reflects a balanced budget representing the full MVP, as well as a modified budget refre reflecting a bare bones implementation. If so fortunate as to be awarded, the additional $1,000 would go towards the remaining MVP costs with gratitude and free admission for life. Thank you for your time. Please look out for each other. And thank you for being here tonight. I hope that was under eight, under eight minutes. It was indeed. Woohoo.